All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, those of you watching the recording, this is uh, SAT Writing and Language Crash Course Day 2. Yes, Day 2, Part 2. And we are on PSAT Practice Test 1. We're going through some questions. We ended up, we left off at, uh, at question 30. Let's continue. And who did we leave off with? Was uh, Sharon, did you finish the last one? Yes. You did? Okay, so Jonathan, you are up. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Uh, lunar farming has its skeptics who are not sure of the method's efficiency. Yeah, eff efficacy. 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 You guys know what eff efficacy means? It's like, effe it's like effectiveness. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, anyway. All right. Uh, ooh, do you know what rule we're being tested on here? Uh, is it punctuation? Looks like it could be, right? Because we got two commas and a uh, an M dash. I think it's something else, though, because I don't see anything wrong with the punctuation. Uh, Do you see anything wrong with the punctuation? Not really. No. I mean, it has punctuation, but yeah. I don't see anything wrong with it. So I, I don't think it's punctuation here. Uh... Does anyone else know what rule we've been testing on here? Huh? Set its completion like uh, standalone statements. No, these are. I mean, they're all standalone thoughts here. Um, obviously, you were saying like, well, the the the, the com we're not being tested on the comma rule because uh, who are not sure of the method's efficacy. This, that's not a, a standalone thought. Neither is who have yet to be convinced. So that's not an issue here. Anybody? Is it keep it simple? Oh, it sure is. Is that Sharon? Yeah. Gosh, I'm darn. so glad you caught that. It is totally keep it simple. Here's the deal, guys. If you see three answer choices, well, okay. Yeah, if you see three answer choices, that there's nothing wrong with them grammatically, but they're just kind of lengthy, and then you see one really short one, there's a really good chance they're testing you on keep it simple. Okay? This is also sort of one of the rule of three. If you see three of the same characteristic and one that doesn't have that same characteristic, go with the one that doesn't have that characteristic. Okay? What's the issue? Well, first of all, what's the right answer? D. It's D. And what's the issue with A, B, and C? They all have the same problem. They're redundant. They're totally redundant. Because what's a skeptic? Someone who's not convinced. Someone who's not convinced of something. <laughs> Someone who's skeptical of something. Someone who's doubting something, right? Mm -hmm. Is a skeptic, is that a commonly understood word? Yeah. I would think so. And again, if it were a technical term, you might need to define it. But it's not. People, you know what a skeptic is. Yeah, certainly this reading level, people know what a skeptic is. Yeah, it's totally redundant, which means unnecessarily repetitive. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. All right. So when you see, be on the lookout. You see three answer choices, and there's nothing grammatically wrong. Um, uh, and, but they're lengthy, and then there's one short one. It's probably the short one. They're definitely testing to keep it simple. All right? All right. All right. Um, all right. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Ryan, you are next. Recalling advice. Go ahead and read that for me, please, Ryan. Recalling advice he received on the best lunar time to plant potatoes. An English farmer says his first reaction was hoopla. Current mainstream agriculture does not factor the moon into their practices, so the concept might seem quaint or irrational. Ooh. Ooh. Ryan, what are they testing us on here for number 31? Possessives. What is it? Possessives? Yeah, possessives is part of it, right? we got to get the right form of the possessive. But it's not. There's, there's another difference between the answer choices. Some are possessive and some are not. What's the other issue? Um, is it misplaced modifiers? No. Transitions? No. The other issue here, it's part of make it match, and it's a make it match number. We've got to get the right uh, either singular or plural form of a possessive, potentially. Uh, Does that make sense? Look, I mean, because, well, you've got it's in there and those. Yeah. Okay, so two of them are singular, two more plural. Which one do you want to start with? Testing. Number or, or possessive? 
possessive. Possessive. Okay, great. Do we need a possessive here? Yes. Uh, um, we do. We do. We do. Because we're talking about the practices of who or what? Whose practices? Uh, the, the farmer. I don't see farmer in that sentence. Say it. Is that you, Flocka? You're right. Agriculture. Current mainstream agriculture. We're talking about the practices of current mainstream agriculture. Do you guys see that or no? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's not the moon. We're not talking about the moon's practices. That doesn't make any sense. Right, and that's how you test it. You're like, the moon's practice? What about the factor? The factor's practices? That doesn't make any sense. The practices of, oh, current mainstream agriculture. That makes sense. Okay. Does that make Does that make sense? Yeah. How to find the possessive? Yes. Okay. Now, so we definitely, we need possessive. Because we know we need a possessive, we can eliminate what answer choices? This is Ryan, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Which answer choice can we eliminate because we know we need a possessive? B. We can eliminate B. What else can we eliminate? And D. Uh, we cannot eliminate D. Huh? We need to go to the rules uh -huh. for writing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let's go to the rules for writing. Commonly confused possessives with no apostrophes. You see it here? Uh-huh. All right. The possessive form is the one without the apostrophe. It's tough to remember because we always associate um, apostrophes with possessives, but not for its, not for their, and not for your. Does that make sense, Ryan? Yep. Okay, and when we're doing this, use the rules. You know, be like, oh, wait a second, hold on. Which one is the possessive? Which one is the... Oh, okay, okay, so it's without the apostrophe, it's the possessive. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay, yes. so which one can we eliminate? We can't eliminate D. We can eliminate what? So that B is gone. We can eliminate C, right? Because it's, it's with um, an apostrophe is not possessive. That's a contraction for it is. Does that make sense, Ryan? Yep. Okay, so that's gone. So it's either A or D. Now, which one do we need, A or D? Is it, is it, do we need the plural or the singular form of the possessive? Well, what's in possession here, Ryan? What's in possession? The, the, uh, the practices. Well, it's the practices of something, right? The practices is the thing, I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry, you're, the practice is the thing that's being possessed, but who is in possession, who or what is in possession of the practices? Mainstream agriculture. Mainstream agriculture. Does that make sense? All right, yeah. so is, is mainstream agriculture, is that singular or is that plural? That's singular. It's singular. So we need the singular form, what's the right answer here? It's... Oh, it's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, yes, it's, you're right, I'm sorry. I thought you were, I was waiting for, like, it's D. Uh, yes, it, it's, you're good, that's funny. It is, it's, it's, yes, um, it's D, you're correct. Plug it in, I want to hear it. Plug in, plug in, it's, D. Current mainstream ag agriculture does not factor the moon into its practices, so the concept might seem quaint or irrational. Okay, how does that sound, Ryan? Is that all right? Sounds great, right? Plug in, plug in, uh, in A. I just want to hear it again. Current mainstream agriculture does not factor the moon into their practices. How does that sound? No. It doesn't, it doesn't sound as good. It's not terrible because you can imagine like a bunch of farmers doing something or something, but it's not, I mean, the subject is not farmers. It's mainstream agriculture, and that's singular. So, D is the best. All right, good job, Ryan. Um,. All right, so next, additionally, lunar farming. Let's go to my next volunteer, which is William. Did I skip Jonathan? No. We, no. No, I didn't skip. Okay, all right. Do you want to do it again, Jonathan? No, I'm sorry. I'm just joking. Uh, um, William, you're next. Okay. All right. uh, additionally, lunar farming. Additionally, lunar 
referring is based in astrology as opposed to astronomy, and no extensive scientific studies have yet been conducted that measure the most overall influence on farming. So supporters continue to wait for their practices to be verified scientifically. All right, excellent. Go ahead and read 32 for me, please. The writer wants to conclude the paragraph effectively, while also reinforcing the point that skepticism towards lunar farming still exists. Which choice best accomplishes this goal? Oh, boy. All right, this is so specific. You see how specific these questions are, guys? You guys see how specific they are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Suspe speci specific. Specific. <laughs> like, like, don't just run over those, rush over the questions. You gotta have them in mind when you're reading the answer choices. Uh, William, we're looking for the answer choice that does what? What does it have to do? It has to conclude the paragraph effectively, but it also needs to reinforce the point that skepticism towards lunar farming exists. That's so specific. All right, but let's do it. Let's test it now. Okay, so go ahead and read uh, A, the, I guess the underlined portion. Just read the underlined portion. Yeah. That's fine. So supporters continue to wait for their practices to be verified scientifically. Okay, does that conclude the paragraph effectively and reinforce the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? No. It does not. Why not? I agree completely. Because it's only just saying the supporters are waiting for their practice to yeah. be verified. It doesn't have any mention of skepticism. It's not about the skeptics. Isn't that tricky? Because on the surface it sounds kind of good. Did anybody choose A? No. No? Okay. On the surface it sounds pretty good. But then you're like, wait, but no, it's not about the supporters. It's not about the skeptics. And it just doesn't reinforce the point that skepticism still exists. It just doesn't do it. So A is gone. All right? Do you see that, Gabe? Do you see it, Gabe? No, you... Yeah? It's tricky, right? I know. That's, that's my yeah. sentiments exactly. All right. Uh, go ahead and read B for me, please, William. And therefore, no sound scientific data on the subject exists to date. Okay. Does that conclude the paragraph effectively and reinforce the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? No. No, and because this is so jumps to conclusions. It's so tempting too. I know, I know. It's so tempting. Now, this is tricky because it's like a reason why skepticism might still exist. Right? Right, that might be a reason to be skeptical. But it doesn't reinforce the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists. There's a logical jump you gotta make there that B doesn't do, it doesn't provide it. Does that make sense, guys? Why we can eliminate B? Yeah. B is gone. Go ahead and read C for me, please. Yet many continue to practice lunar farming. What about C? Don't use that. Yeah, no, that's doesn't, like doesn't the, mention it either. That's like the opposite of reinforcing the point that skepticism still exists, right? Read D for me. Leading many to conclude that the practice is based in folklore, not fact. Does that conclude the paragraph effectively while also reinforcing the point that skepticism toward lunar farming still exists? Yes. Yes, it does. D is your answer. Any questions about 32? No. 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 That legit makes sense. Mm -hmm. To everybody. Yeah. Great. Yes, sir. Great. Just answer the, Like, if you just read the question carefully and answer it, you're way ahead of most students. Because somehow, like, students just... And even, uh, even when I first started tutoring, I had to break the habit. I would read a question and immediately ignore it and be like, which one do you like the best? Was the question I was answering in my head. That's not the question. Answer the question. Great job, William. Let's do uh, 33. And up next, in the bullpen, Zara. Can you hear me, Zara? You can all just pretend not to hear me, and you'd never have to answer. I can't believe I just told you that. Um, oh, what am I thinking? All right. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and, and take it from Stillman Says, please. Zara. Stillman says, not the mother of the mind that you accept or believe by choice. Indeed, the five doubts the skeptical moon farmer wound up planting his potatoes according to the lunar cycle and claims they were the best I have ever tasted. Agricultural professor Jennifer Kaufman has a similar response to Farua's bounty in Italy. Smell this spring, Rosemary, she says. Smile how amazingly fragrant that is. Mm, okay, great. Now read 33 for me, please. All right. Which, 
Ms. Choice gives an additional support in the example that emphasizes the important, importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method. Oh boy, this is so specific once again. Zara, can you tell me in like real human terms what is, what is, what are we looking for here? Choice that does um, what? I guess like another, something that will like add to the underlying sentence or like. Well, we got We got to add. We're adding the paragraph here. So, which choice gives an additional supporting example that does what? Nine. Sorry. Uh huh. The emphasize the importance of what? Of of the senses of the senses, right? Yeah. The importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method. Okay. I guess maybe there's no like there's no like uh, rephrasing that. You just gotta get really read the question carefully, I suppose. It's maybe a better way to, to approach that. Okay, um, go ahead and read A for me again, just the underlined portion. Smell rosemary, she says. Smell how amazingly fragrant that is. Okay, does that give an additional supporting example that emphasizes the importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method? No. Why do you say no? Actually, <laughs> uh, yeah. Why do you say yeah? Huh? I think I'm sorry? I did not hear you. One more time. I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. What did you say? What did you say? Did you oh, I was wondering why you sh why you think yes, it does. It does emphasize the importance of the senses. Um, I agree with you. I mean, I think that it's already good. Like, I don't think anything else needs to be. Yeah, I mean, it's like what, you know, we're talking about the sense of smell here, right? I mean, it sounds pretty good. Smell this rosary, smell how fragrant that is. Let's, let's check the others, though. Go ahead and read B for me, please. She has taken photographs of the grapevines and landscapes. Okay, does that emphasize the importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method? No. No. Now some kids are gonna fall for this, Zara. Some kids are gonna pick. Why are some kids gonna pick B? Oh no. Why? I know it's it's tragic. Why? Any ideas? No. Can everybody imagine why a lot of kids are gonna pick B? A lot. Pick B. A lot. What sense does it appear to address? Sight. Does it address sight? Yeah. Not much. Not much. Just I mean, it times photographs when you have to use sight to see a photo. But I mean, compare that to A. Which one emphasizes the importance of the senses? A or B? No. I mean, come on. It's A. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and read C for me, please. She takes careful note about Ferrura's farming methods, asking Ferrura to clarify how he prepares the soil. All right, all right. How about that one? Does that emphasize the importance of the senses in judging the success of lunar farming? Um, no. No, not at all. That's gone. Going to read deep. Um. She dips bread into Ferrero's olive oil as he explains the soil preparation he does in the fall. Does that emphasize the importance of the senses in judging the success of the lunar farming method? No. I have a confession to make. No, it does not. You're right. It's not D. I picked D when I first did I this did test. Too. Did anybody else do it? Maddie, I love I your did. honesty. <laughs> did anybody else pick D? I I think this question is a study in psychology because uh -huh. what what sense do you are you thinking of here? Uh -huh. Eating. Eating. Eating's eating not a sense, right? Taste. But you're like, this makes you hungry uh -huh. when you read, especially if you're taking this test while you're hungry. You're like, oh, dipping bread into olive oil. <laughs> like, I can uh -huh. see it. I can almost taste it. Oh, you. And so, like that, just that just pops out. My I picked D when I did this. I wasn't answering the question. I was just picking the one I liked the most. That's all. 
Does that make sense why A is so much better than even D? Uh -huh. Where does D where does D address taste? It doesn't. There's a, a jump you've gotta make to pick D. But B look B it's the word smell in it twice. And the word fragrant in it. Right? No. It's A. Any questions about thirty three? No. Aren't they tricky sometimes? Uh-huh. And some and sometimes they play off of our our, our need to eat food a lot. All right, like they did there. Is anybody else hungry? Right now? Okay. Anyway. All right. Um, well, great. <laughs> hey, we got into the next passage about about cookbooks. Um, <laughs> I apologize if anyone is doing this before dinner. I am very sorry. I had a snack before we started working. All right, you're gonna make it. I promise. You're gonna make it. Um, let's let's see if we can finish this. Let's rock and roll. We're gonna go fast. Um, give me. Please, Maddie, you're up. My ever honest Maddie. Start with the um, the introduction, please, or the title. Okay, recipes for history. The I don't know. Zathmary, Zathmary, I guess. I don't know. Zathmary. Yeah. <laughs> the Zathmary Cookbook Collection. In 1990s, Chef Louis Zathmary of uh, Voracious. Voracious. Anybody know what voracious means? Voracious. Victorious? I don't know. No, nah, that's a good guess. Like it. it means hungry. <laughs> hungry, actually, it means hungry. <laughs> if you have a okay. voracious appetite. A voracious a, collector. Yeah. Go ahead. Go a ahead. voracious collector of cookbooks donated approximately 20,000 culinary artifacts to the University of Iowa Library. The gift, the gift included more than 100 manuscript recipe books, collections of recipes handwritten by people who used them. Okay, go ahead and read question 34 for me, please. The writer is considering deleting the underlying portion, ending the sentence of the period. Should the writer make this deletion? Okay. Hmm. What is your instinct? Should the writer make that deletion? You know what? Let's do this. Let's let's read the two sentences together without the underlying portion. Uh, we'll start with the gift and then the manuscripts. Okay. The gift included more than 100 manuscript recipe books. The manuscripts, some of which shall date back to the 17th century, are invaluable resources for uh, for food historians as well as the general public. Okay. What is your instinct? Should the writer make the deletion or no? Um, no. Okay. So let's, uh, don't worry about A and B right now, let's just look at C and D. So go ahead and read C for me, please. Okay. No, because the underlying portion defines a term that is important to the passage. Okay. Does the underlying portion define a term that is important to the passage? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. C's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read D. No, because the underlying portion gives an example of a particular culinary artifact. Does the underlying portion give an example of a particular culinary artifact? No. No, it doesn't. So, C? If you pick C, mm -hmm. you got it right. It's C. That's not bad at all, is it? No. Now, hold on. What rule is this? There's a rule for this one. Um, is it make it match? I don't know. <laughs> there is... I've got it under backup claims as relevant evidence, providing examples or definitions of technical or unfamiliar terms. No. It's always a good idea. And that definitely applies here. Um, if you went with A or B to get rid of it, it just... You get those are both just untrue statements. Mm -hmm. So even if you thought you should get you should get rid of it, A and B just don't work. But I, I like that strategy of just folk, of going with your gut instinct first, and then just, and addressing those that go with your gut instinct. It, it generally works very well. All right, well done, Maddie. Um, let's do thirty-five. We are at uh, Drew. Feels like it's been a while, Drew. Did I skip over you, Drew? Uh, no. Previously, no? Okay, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, all right, go ahead and read the 35. From where? For, uh, 35, question 35. Because of? Well, okay, because of the astonishing size and range of the... Is it Murray? Zathmer, yeah. Zathmer. Nation to the University of Iowa, making this kind of... Uh, yeah. 
Cornucopia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cornucopia of information available to the readers was a challenge. Yeah, okay, great. So let's answer 35. Drew, what, uh, you seem to be, <laughs> you're getting some tough ones here. What rule have we been tested on here? Do you know? Uh, uh, no. No? Does anybody know what rule this is? Transitions. Transition words. Yeah, again, transition words. Now, this is tricky. No. Mo most of the time, I'd say probably about 80% of the time, the transition word questions, it's going to be two separate sentences. Here, it's the same sentence again. Okay? So the first idea, and I'll guide you through this one here, Drew. First idea is the astonishing size and range of Zath Murray's donation to the University of Iowa. That's the first thing, all right? It's a big collection. The second thing is making this cornucopia of information available to readers is a challenge. Okay, those are the two ideas being connected here. What's the relationship between those? We've got a really big collection. And then making this cornucopia of information available to readers is a challenge. What's the relationship there? Is it similarity? Is it contrast? Cause and effect? Or providing examples? Can we eliminate any? Can we eliminate any? Contrast. It's not contrast. It means we can limit what answer choices? B and C. B and C. Yeah. Do you guys see that? Isn't that great? Yeah. For all these yeah. questions, all of them, without even having read the question or the, the passage, be like, okay, oh, I see two of the same relationship. Gone. Gone. At this point, you haven't even read the sentence, you got a 50 50 shot of getting it right. Uh -huh. So we're left with because of and in addition to. What do you think it is, Drew? <laughs> Are you going 50-50 here? Flip a coin. Well, look, hold on, think about it. There's the two ideas. You've got a really big collection, and then making this information available to readers is a challenge. What's the relationship? Does anybody know? In a dip, uh, no, wait. Is that your final answer? Maybe. <laughs> you say yes. <laughs> yes, you're right. Yes, Drew, it is. It is uh, because of... It's cause and effect, right? Because the, the collection's so big, making that information available to readers is a challenge. Right? Yeah. I mean, th that's a little counterintuitive, maybe. I mean, if, if it were really, really tiny, that would be tricky, too, I suppose. But, but because it's so big, how do we get all this information to people? It's causing, It's not similarity, and that would be in addition to. So it is. It is a because of. Did anybody get that one right? Did anybody pick A? No. Yes. Some of you did. Okay. Gabe, did you even? Did you do it? Did you have time? <laughs> no, 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 you. That's right. Okay, I appreciate. It. Yeah, I guess that would explain why you didn't get it right. Uh, no, I was thinking one answer, and then and then you. Uh, okay, I got you. I got you. All right. Um. Any questions about that one? No. Okay. M again, most of the time with transition words, it's going to be two sentences. Here we've seen a couple examples in a row. Uh, it's the, it's the, going to be the minority um, where it's in the same sentence. But be on the lookout for that, too, because it happens. All right. Let's uh, keep going. Uh, give me Falaka. Yeah. So take it from working in conjunction. Working in conjunction with the library. Okay. Working in conjunction with the library, the University of Iowa. Wait, aren't we on 36? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I skipped 36. You are right. You are right. So go, go ahead and read the sentence again. I'm sorry. Okay. Because of the astonishing size and range of Zach Mary's donation to the University of Iowa, making this cornucopia of information available to readers was a challenge. Hmm. Okay. What rule are we being tested on here, Flocka? Um, I thought it was keep it simple. Do you think it's something else now? Um, I'm not sure. No, let's keep it simple. What's the right answer? If it's e. keep it simple. It's D. 
is anything added by saying donation to the University of Iowa? No. no we already know. It's, it's already been established in the previous paragraph. Of so many culinary artifacts, donation of cookbooks, anything added by that? No, and there's nothing grammatically incorrect. You see that, guys? There's nothing grammatically incorrect in A, B, or C. Nothing. They're just wordy. So we got three wordy answer choices. One real simple one that's short. Go with the simple one. How easy is that when you recognize the rule? Yeah. Right? That's it. Keep, they love keep it simple. After make it match, keep it simple is the most commonly tested rule. They love it. All right? And it, go, it goes so counter. So many students like think, like, well, that's a really complicated sound and answer. That must be it. No, 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 and no. Keep it simple. And no. Thank you, Gabe. All right. Great job, Flocka. Give me. Please, Gabe. Gabe, answer question. Working in conjunction. All right. 38, right? Well... Did I say, just take it from working in conjunction with the library. Oh, okay. Working in conjunction with the library, the University of Iowa Press published volumes as varied as the PEO cookbook written in rural Iowa in 1908 and ladies pour laissez recipes yeah. book <laughs> Bookie. written yeah. in the English countryside from 1665 to 1822. Librarians were happy to fill Smith Smith Zathmarine. Zathmarine. S. You can call S. And seriously, guys, home. This is a legit tip, guys. If you're reading over stuff, and I, I do recommend that you sound out everything in your head. I really do. Especially when we're talking about like the rhythms of the language or the punctuation and when to use a comma. You've got to sound it out in your head. But if you see a word, you have no idea how to pronounce it, just call it the S collection. Don't spend your time trying to pronounce it. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So if we want to call it the S collection, you can do it. Although that sounds a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. All right. The, the library. So the manuscripts, too, delicate to be checked out. The li two library patrons remained largely unexplored. Okay. What rule have we been testing on here, guys? Transition. Yes, 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 Gabe. You're right. Transitions. Transitions. Okay. Now here, again, this is so funky. I know we, we see three... It's in the same sentence here. Okay? Yeah. What two ideas are being connected? Um, the, Did you know? Uh, the manuscripts and the... Um, no. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a manuscript, manuscripts is like a topic. It's not really an idea. Okay? Uh -oh. And so here's here's the first idea. Okay. The, follow along, Gabe. Here's the first idea. It's just the first half of the sentence. First idea is librarians were happy to show the Zathmary collection to people who were able to visit the library. Okay? So okay. librarians were happy to show the Zathmary collection to people visiting the library. And then the other idea is the manuscripts, too delicate to be checked out, remained unexplored. That's the second idea. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? So, librarians are happy to show off the collection, and then the uh, manuscripts too delicate to be checked out remain unexplored. What's the relationship between those two ideas? Similarity, cause and contrast, and cause and effect, or providing examples. I heard, somebody say, I heard somebody say cause and effect. If it's cause and effect, the first thing has to be causing the second thing. Okay? Is the first thing, okay. is the fact that librarians librarians are happy to show off the Zathmary collection, is that the reason why no. the manuscripts remained unexplored? No. 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 It's, no. it's not the reason why. It's not cause and effect here. Does anybody see the relationship? Uh-huh. What is it? What is it? Any uh, guesses? It's D. It is D. But it's contrast. It's contrast, right? You're right, Gabe. The librarians want to show off the collection, but even though they want to show it off, they can't because the, the manuscripts are too delicate. 
Oh. That's a contrast relationship. Do you see that, guys? Yes. Those two yeah. ideas are being contrasted? Yes or no? Do you see that? Yes. All right. That's contrast. Um, so, yeah, it's got it. The only contrast transition word is, is D, but. I don't, see two, I don't see two of the same relationship, so we can't eliminate any that way. You just, got to, you just got to identify the two ideas and identify the relationship there. Okay. Those are tough. Those in, in logical order are the toughest ones. Go ahead and please. Uh, thank you, Gabe. Good job, by the way, picking that up. I'm you. You're welcome. Uh, Sharon, come on up, up to bat. This all started to change. Go ahead and read that, please. Alright. This all started to change in 2012 when the university expanded its DIY history project, DIY stands for Do It Yourself, to include the, manuscript, the manuscripts. The project enlists volunteers to transcript. The recipes working from our home computers, the volunteers type up the scan and which the recipe. By the way, good good use of the colon there, right? We see uh, transcribe the recipes and then an explanation of how the volunteers transcribe the recipes. Okay. Um, so what rule are we being tested on here, Sharon? I said possessives. Yes, yes, it is. Who or what is in possession here? Who or what? Well, whose home computers are we talking about here? The volunteers. The volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the right answer here? C. It's C. Right. We know it's possessive, so we can eliminate which are which are the the two that are singular. Uh, B and. You're right. B and. D is also possessive, yeah. It's either A or C, and ours, that's like, that's like the possessive of we. Well, that's not us, we're talking about their computers at a C. Great job, Sharon. Um, questions about that one? No? We're going to finish this test. Uh, Jonathan, loud and proud, uh, after a page is transcribed. Uh, after a page is transcribed and proofread, it is digitized and becomes part of a searchable online archive. Volunteer transcribers need no particular ex expertise. Prosaic directives are provided on the DIY history website. Yeah, ooh, okay. Um, no question here for this one. What rule are we being tested on here? Any, any ideas? Look at the answer choices. How are the answer choices different, guys? Uh, keep it simple. Yeah, right? Like, three of them are, like, really obscure word choice. This is weird. <laughs> and one is... You know, simple. Guess what the right answer is? B. It's B. You guys see this? Mm -hmm. Don't. And so many kids are gonna pick like they're gonna they're like, hey, I don't even know what that means. That must be right. No, 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 and no, and no. <laughs> okay. Keep it simple. All right. Any questions? No. Great job. No. All right. Nine. Nine. Did somebody say nine? I love it. Um, that's German for no, those of you that don't. My blood. Ryan. Go ahead and read for me. Transcribing is easy. Transcribing is easy. The ingredients. One recipe requires something called ring on root. And measurements. A dough of baking soda. Moreover, can be puzzled. Ooh. What are we being tested on here, Ryan? Uh, transitions. Transition words. Let's do the method. Okay, this does fit um, the, the most common pattern here. It's two sentences. Okay, so let's read the sentence before, and then the sentence with the transition word, but we're going to read it without the transition word. Okay? So we're starting with transcribing is easy. Go ahead and read that for me, please. 
Um, oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, transcribing is easy. The ingredients, one recipe requires something called ring on root and measurements. A ditto of baking soda can be puzzling. Hmm. Okay. Here's, here's something I like to do sometimes when I'm trying to understand a sentence is I just get rid of the... Oh, I mean, always read the stuff in parentheses. Always start. But if you're trying to understand a sentence or simplify it, try reading it without the parentheses. You never need them to get the main point in the sentence. They just add information or, or context. So read it. Do that same method again, but take out the stuff in parentheses. Transcribing is easy. The ingredients and measurements can be puzzling. What's the relationship there? Is that more obvious now? Yes. What's the relationship? Um, Similarity, contrast, cause and effect, or providing examples. Similarity. Transcribing is easy. The ingredients and measurements can be puzzling. That doesn't sound like similarity to me. Providing examples. Transcribing is easy. The ingredients and measurements can be puzzling. Is it contrast? That is a contrast relationship. Yes, sir. Think about it. Think about it. This thing's easy. This thing's tough. Contrast. You guys see it now? Or no? Yeah. Yeah. Now, and it's, that's tempting, right? Because they're giving examples of, like, what are SPE required? Right? They give two examples there. But the relationship between the two ideas, transcribing is easy, the ingredients and measurements can be puzzling. Those are the two ideas. That's not providing examples. It's not an example of how, how easy transcribing is. Right? That's an example of how confusing it is. I don't know what ring and root is. I don't know what a ditto is. Does that make sense? Why it's a contrast relationship, guys? Yeah. Okay. What's the right answer here? D. No, C. C is the only contrast transition word. C. In short, would be a, that summary thing. Therefore, is cause and effect, and moreover, would be similarity. All right. Um, good. That one's tough. But you got if you if you get rid of the 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 parentheses, you got a shot at. It. Um, all right. Who who uh, was that? William? Was that you? Or that was Ryan? That was me. Ryan. All right, yeah. William, you're up, buddy. The goal. The goal is to digitize all the manuscripts in the Seth Murray collection, making them available to anyone with access of a computer and the internet. Ooh. <laughs> How is A? How is A? It doesn't work. Doesn't sound right, doesn't it? It sounds off. Boy, I don't like it. That's generally a good sign that's not the right answer. If you're reading, you're like, Ooh, access of a computer, is that? If it sounds, throws you off like that, it's probably not right. It's not. What rule are they testing us on here? What rule, guys? Uh, it, it's actually, it's, it's commonly confused words. Do I not have, I used to have this on my list of commonly confused words. I might need to put it back on. I don't. I'm going to put it back on. Um, I think it is. It's on there. Access and excess? Yeah, is, it's on there. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's under. Yeah, it's right there. Access and excess. I see accept and accept. Effect and effect. Proceed and proceed. I don't see access and excess. Oh. Let me add it real quick. Oh. I thought it was on there. But by the way, the same rule applies, right? Because it's still A for action. It's still A for action, right? Yes. Yeah. Do we need the the uh, the A form or the E form here of access? The A form. A yeah. Every time anyone with access. Oh wait, hold on. With access, no access can also be something. Yeah. Right. If you have access to something, that's not a verb. There, boy, that's tricky. Yikes. What's the right answer here? <laughs> B. It's B. It's B. All right, excess means what? What does excess mean? Too much. 
too much of something. Yeah, we're not talking about too much of a computer. You can never have too much of a computer in the internet. <laughs> Just ask my five-year-old boy. All right. She calls it her iPad. We're working on that one. All right. Um, <laughs> father of the year. All right. Let's. Uh, it is B. All right. Let's finish this. Let's finish. We're gonna do it. Um, who is up next? It is. It is not Drew. It is Zara. Zara, the library. Go ahead and read it for me. The library is working hard to publicize the project and encourage the public to try the recipes. It has formed the club with the cooking manuscript recipes. Some recipes won't fit well in the 21st century. One club member called her 1800s gingerbread a molasses laden brick, while others have worked just fine. Mm okay. What rule are they testing us on here? Um, to make it match, you're absolutely right. What part of make it match? Tense. Tense, yes. Now, hold on. Let's read the sentence without the parentheses. Okay. All right. Some, some recipes don't fare well in the 21st century, while others had worked just fine. How was that? No, that's not good. What tense do we need? Present. Why do you say present, Maddie? Um, because it's talking about like it. If you even like read the first sentence, it doesn't uh -huh. say. You just see when it says encouraged. It says encouraged. It said encouraged. So it just tells you that it's like at the moment. Um, encouraged. That's it. that's not just the previous sentence. We're talking, let's talk about the sentence where the where the word is in. Some um, recipes don't fare well. That's present tense. That didn't fare well. Don't yeah. fare well. And this is so tricky because you read the stuff. And, read the, read it with the parentheses now. Some recipes don't fare well in the twenty first century. One club member called her eighteen hundreds gingerbread a molasses Latin brick. While others have worked just fine. See, that's like an aside, right? That's just extra information. But. The main idea in the sentence, right? Some recipes don't wear, don't fare well in the 21st century. While others, what word do we need here? Work, work, work. work. Present tense. Present tense. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. That's very tricky. It's very, it's real helpful. I'm telling you to watch out. So you have sometimes I always read the stuff in parentheses, but if you're trying to figure out an answer choice, sometimes sometimes it's real insightful to get rid of them, which it is here. All right, um, great, we are almost done. Do you guys have a couple minutes? Yeah. If you need to go, you can go. Just yeah. finish up the, um, uh, in the video, but I want to I wanna finish this test. We're so close, and we got to do um, logical order. Um, we are at Maddie. Go ahead, Maddie, read the next one. Another instance. Okay, in another instance of library outreach, a competition at the 2013 Iowa State Fair, contestants baked desserts in three categories, almond cheesecake, summer mince pie, and marble pie, using recipes from the S cat. Uh, yep, concept. great. I love it. Uh, what To look at the answer choices, what rule are we being tested on here, Maddie? What'd you say? What rule are we being tested on here? Uh, what rule are we being tested on? Uh, logical order. Not for right. 43. Did you say 43? Yeah, 143. Isn't it listing in logical order? Oh, I see what you're saying. No, no. No. Oh. Does anybody know what rule? Uh, Don't complicate this one. It's pretty obvious. Look at the difference between the answer choices. Just where the commas. Just commas. Yeah, it's punctuation. Just commas. All right. So I need you to read, plug in these answer choices, and read them... As they're written, if there's a pause, take a pause. If there's a comma, take a pause. If there's no no comma, don't take a pause. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Take it again from, um, you did A. How did A sound, by the way? Um, I think the sounded good. It sounded okay. Try, try plug in B. Well, just do it, plug okay. them all in. Plug in B, C, and D. 
But read the whole sentence. Excuse me. No, I lied. Just read read the read the um, read the answer choices. That's fine. In another instance of library outreach, a competition in 2013, Iowa State Fair contestants baked three desserts in three or baked desserts in three categories: almond, summer cheesecake, summer mints, pie, and Marlboro pie. How's that? Uh, not good. That is awful. It, Although I like the I like the sound of summer cheese, cheesecake summer. That sounds. Wonderful, but I don't think that's a thing. Plug it. In, just read C, and plug okay. that in. Plug that into the the part with the M dash. Okay. Uh, contestants bake three desserts in three cat. Or contestants bake desserts in three categories: almond cheesecake summer, mince pie, and marble pie. How's that? Um. It's. I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. The word you're looking for is that. terrible. Almond mm -hmm. cheesecake summer. Mm -hmm. No dice. No, it's not a thing. Plug in D. Okay. Um, contestants bake desserts in three categories. Almond, cheesecake, summer, mince pie, and marble pie. How's D? That's bad. It's bad, right? Because mm -hmm. they need... That's like five categories, and I don't think summer is a type of pie. Mm -hmm. So gone. It's a. Mm -hmm. Makes it. You guys have to read it as it's written. If you do that, you're going to be good. Let's answer forty-four. Uh, this is. And I got to teach you a lot of order. And we're done. Give me, please, Drew. Ha ha. Yeah. Can you hear me, Drew? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being honest. Read uh, the question. The writer plans to add the following sentence to the paragraph. The judges reported that the entries were delicious. To make this paragraph most logical, the sentence should be placed. All right. Now, we use a method I call sentence sandwich. Okay? We're going to read the sentence before, the sentence in question, then the sentence after. Okay? So to test answer choice A, which is after sentence one, you're going to read sentence one, then you read the judges reported the entries were delicious, and then read sentence two. Does that make sense, Drew? But just plugging it in you're, after. You're plugging in, but you're going to read three sentences total. You're going to read the sentence before, the sentence in question, and the sentence after. Okay? Uh, so right, test yeah. answer choice A after sentence one. So start with sentence one. Okay. Um, the library is working hard to publicize the project and encourage the public to try the uh, to try the recipes. The judges reported that the entries were delicious. It has formed a club dedicated to cooking many recipes. How's A? Nah. Nah. That's, that's terrible. Okay. Gone. All right. Plug it in uh, B after sentence two. Okay. It has formed a club dedicated to cooking recipes. The judges reported that the entries were delicious. Some recipes don't <clears throat> fare well in the 21st century. One club member called hers 1800s gingerbread, a molasses ladder brick, while others have worked just fine. How's that? Oh, others. Yeah. yeah. How's that? Uh, okay, I guess. Do you want me to, like, replace uh, the 42 part with work? Oh, yeah, yeah. When you reread it, read it with the correct answer choice. You're right. Good good question. Yeah, you, so you thought that sounded good? Um, kind of. Kind of? Okay, let's keep it. Try uh, after sentence three. Okay. Some recipes don't oh, fare well in the 21st century. One club member called theirs 1800s gingerbread, a molasses lot of brick, while others work just fine. The judges reported the entries were delicious. <laughs> and another in the library, yeah, no. No, not that. No. Try D after sentence four. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, in another instance of the library outreach, a competition at the 2013 Iowa State Fair. Consist uh, contestants bake desserts in three categories: almond cheesecake, summer mince pie, and a uh, Marlboro pie, using recipes from the Zazetberry collection. Um, the judges, judges and the, yeah. the entries were delicious. I think that, that was pretty good. What do you guys think? Yeah. B or D. I like D. D is correct. Yeah, it is D. How relatively easy is that if you do that sentence sandwich method? Uh, e. 
easy. Pretty straightforward, yes. all right? Take some time. Worth it. You're going to get it, though, if you do it. Any questions? No. No. All right. Um, your homework. I'm going to send you a link to another PSAT practice test. It'll be practice test number two. I want you to do the whole thing, and then we'll cover what we can cover in the next session, okay? Okay. 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 Guys, thank you so much. Um, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed working on this with you. If you got questions anytime, don't hesitate to reach out to me, okay? okay. All right, that wraps it up for day two. Take care, guys. Bye. All right, see you next week. Bye.